Good morning, everybody. 
It is great to see all your joyful faces this morning. Happy first Sunday in Advent. We made it to Advent season, believe it or not. Here at Victory, we aspire to be a church for the city, building families and impacting the community. Beginning today, turning our attention to our sanctuary lamp, which burns today in memory of Pastor Lorne Hosfield, who passed on December 8th of 2022, lovingly remembered by the Redekop family. A celebration in house, I was just told of, Edwin Deering, where are you, Edwin, Edwin, there he is, turns of the young 91 tomorrow, Edwin, congratulations. It's great to celebrate you, Edwin. I want to give a big thank you. Uh, Friday night was a very starry night in Bethlehem indeed. It was a wonderful night if, if you were able to come out to that. We estimate around 300 people probably came through our building uh, on, uh, on Friday. It was a great night. I got to walk a donkey most of the night, which was a great time. Uh, there were sheep, there were crafts, there was food. Uh, the shepherds in particular were unbelievable. It was... It was great. Uh, and so I just want to give a big shout out, a big thank you to all the volunteers and especially Terry. Where are you, Terry O'Neill? You're in here somewhere. There she is in the back. Terry O'Neill, way to go. <laughs> Terry did a fantastic job, put a lot of work into coordinating and making that evening happen. A couple of things with that. Uh, we do ha still have some unused food left over. You can purchase those if you're interested. As well as we need a few helping hands after service today to move, move a few additional items back into the shed. So please find Terry after service if you'd be willing to please help us move a few things for that. Looking on our announcement list, you know it's Advent when we have all our Advent events happening. Uh, the next one I want to point our attention to is happening this Thursday. The 7th at 7 this Thursday will be our Christmas Music Fest. We're partnering with St. Peter's Lutheran where it's going to be a concert. We're going to have musical numbers and pieces. It's going to be a great time to gather together uh, to listen to music, to sing along. Uh, there will also, we're hoping to have a, a good cookie hangout time afterwards, and who doesn't like that? So we're asking, if you are coming and are interested, would you think about bringing your favorite, a plate of your favorite cookies to share? Whatever your favorite is, bring that in to share with us so we can all spend time after the music eating cookies. So that is the 7th at 7. Next Sunday, we have a family event taking place. Next Sunday, the 10th at 3 o'clock in the Christian Ed Room, we are going to gather together for our family Christmas movie and dessert potluck. So we'll be showing the star. If you've never seen that, that's a, that's a great one. It's from the animal's perspective at the birth of Jesus. Uh, Megan is saying, bring your PJs, bring your pillows, and bring treats. So we're going to spread them out on the table and have a lot of food. So uh, kids and uh, grandkids, great-grandkids, neighbors, invite them all. We'll be 3 o'clock next Sunday in the Christian Ed Room for that. Uh, one of the sign-ups in the back to point your attention to for our communion team. Our communion team will be talking about this the last couple of weeks. Thank you to many of you who have signed up. If you are at all interested in learning more about that or being a part of our communion team for, for each Sunday, uh, go ahead and sign up in the back. We're going to be talking about how that scheduling will look and, and all of those different things. We're going to have a quick meeting next Sunday in between services. So next Sunday, give or take 10-ish, that'll kind of depend on how long Pastor Roland talks. Uh, next Sunday around 10-ish for our quick meeting of communion team if you are at all interested. Uh, finally, this, this afternoon at 2.30 will be handbells. This is our final handbell practice for our Christmas Music Fest. So that will be this afternoon at 2.30, our final handbell practice. And one thing I got to say is, uh, t you know, just as an additional bonus for Music Fest, Pastor Roland will be our MC for the evening. And Pastor Roland, I got to say, if your MCing is anywhere on the level of your bing being a bingo caller, uh, I think we found uh, another calling for Pastor Roland Amadeus Weisbrot. <laughs> Actually, I have no idea what his middle name is, but we'll go with that. So... 
Uh, with that, I would like to invite our Victorians and our handbells to come up for a special piece to begin our Advent service. And as they come up and prepare, we do indeed light the first candle of our Advent wreath, which signifies hope. And as we know, Advent is indeed a season of hopeful expectation that God is going to fulfill his promises. So as we enter into this season, have hope, my brothers and sisters. God has and God will fulfill his promises. Well, thank you, everyone. Nothing quite gets us into the season like the Christmas music. And that's just a taste of what we're going to have on Thursday. So please do come on Thursday night and at 7 o'clock, and we're going to have a wonderful time bringing in the season. Please rise as we join together in worship this morning. We begin, as all things do, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. My friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Bearing that truth in mind, we take a moment to examine ourselves before our Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship this morning by singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Well, you may be seated, and as you are, I invite all kids in the house to come on down to the front. Kids, come on down. All right. Hi, everybody. How are we doing today? Good. Well, great. I'm glad to hear this. All right, today is your lucky day. Today is your lucky day because you have come to church and each one of you is going to get a whole quarter. A whole quarter today. Now, a quarter is how much? Anybody? 25 cents. 25 cents. Now, my grandpa talks about, he goes back, remembers the days where for one of these, French fries were, five, were a nickel, five cents. Hamburgers and milkshakes were a dime each. So for 25 cents, for a quarter, you could have a hamburger, french fries, and a milkshake. I'm sure prices are still the same today. We should go try that. <laughs> so, on a quarter, we have one side, we'll call it heads. That is the queen. The queen is on one side. 
On the other side, you will have a different picture. This one has a maple leaf. Some of them have uh, a reindeer. Some of them have, looks like a beaver. So there's different things on the back, all very Canadian, okay? So what I'm going to ask you to do is to flip. Each of you is going to get a quarter. You're going to flip it. Now, if you've never flipped it before, you hold out one of your fingers like a hook. You put your thumb in that hook, and you flip that coin. Your goal is to get the queen, the head, three times. That is your goal until I say stop. Okay? So we're going to try this. If you get it three times, you stop and give me a thumbs up. Okay? That's something you can stand up. We're just not going to go by the handbell table for obvious reasons. So we're going to rotate this over here. Okay? And everybody gets a quarter. There you go. Here you go. You're very welcome. Here you go. Here you go. Okay. There you go. There you go. And here you go. And so Pastor Roland doesn't feel left out. Pastor, here you go. Okay. All right, everybody. Let's try to flip them. Your goal is to get the queen, the head of the quarter, three times. Go ahead. Three times. So you, then you pick it up. And after you get, if you get three, tell me. Give me a thumbs up if you get it three times. You got to keep track. Pastor Roland, you're in this too. <laughs> oh, we got a couple thumbs up. Great. Way to go. Good job, everybody. Okay. Good job, everybody. Let's come back over here. Go sit down. Can we give it up for our kids and their amazing flipping? All right, guys, you can sit down. Hold on to your quarters. Hold on to your quarters. Pastor Roland, did you get it? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm keeping this for my milkshake and my hamburger. Uh, that's right. Good. Okay. So, today, Pastor Roland lit a candle over there on the wreath because today is the first Sunday of Advent. Now, Advent, this first Sunday, is about hope, okay? Now, when you were flipping this quarter, what were you hoping for? Can somebody t tell me what you were hoping for? Yes, young lady. Heads. Heads, that's right. You were hoping that the queen would be facing you each time. Yes. And you were hoping that it would happen three times. Okay, think about that. What were you trusting in? How are you making that happen? Okay, Jesus, good, you got ahead of me there. Yeah, hold on to that answer. What's that? Yeah, flipping the quarter. So it's, there wasn't a whole lot in flipping a quarter to put your trust in. It's the luck of the draw. It's chance, if you will. Maybe you get a good bounce. You know, some people say, well, if you put heads the first and the third time, the odds will work out that you'll get it, all these different statistics. But there's really nothing that we can actually trust our hope in flipping the quarter in. It's just luck. Today, in our, in our Bible readings, we realize that the hope that we have is actually real because it is based in what's called faith. And faith in who? Jesus. There it is. Our hope is real because our faith is based in Jesus. Was Jesus real? Yes, he was. Jesus and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit still works in your lives today even to this day. So the hope that we have is in the Bible. The hope that we have is in Jesus, who is real. It's in the cross that was real, the empty tomb on Easter that is real, the Holy Spirit that works in you that is real. So today, I'm going to let you keep these quarters. Keep these quarters, and when you look at this quarter, remember that our hope is not like that. Our hope is real because it's in Jesus, okay? So let's stand up on the stairs here. Hold on to your quarter. And friends, I invite you to extend a hand forward to join me if you would like. We're going to pray over our kids this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these kids. Thank you for their lives, for their hearts, who you're crafting them to be. Lord, I just pray that they would remember that their hope in you is real. Because your Holy Spirit works in each one of them. And you have a plan and a purpose for their life. Bless them this morning, Lord, as they go to Sunday school. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, you can take your quarters and off you go to Sunday school. And as you do, I invite our reader to come forward this morning.
The first reading this morning is from Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down. How the mountains would quake in your presence. As fire causes wood to burn and water to boil, your coming would make the nations tremble. Then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quaked. For since the world began, no ear has heard, no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow godly ways. But you have been angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. Yet no one calls on your name or pleads with you for mercy. Therefore, you have turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. And yet, O Lord, you are our Father. You are the clay and you are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. Don't be so angry with us, Lord. Please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we are all your people. The psalm today, Psalm 80, 1 to 7, will read it responsively. Please listen, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph's descendants like a flock. To Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Turn us again to yourself, O God. O Lord God of heaven's armies, you've had fed us with sorrow. You have made us a score of neighboring nations. Turn us again to yourself, O God of heaven's armies. Make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. The second reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this, for he is faithful to do what he says, and he has invited you into the partnership with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for our gospel acclamation. Well, my friends, the gospel of the Lord on this first Sunday in Advent comes to us from St. Mark chapter 13. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that his return is very near, right at the door. 
I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when that time will come, be on guard, stay alert. The coming of the Son of Man can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave each of his slaves instructions about the work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return in the evening, at midnight, before dawn, or at daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. I say to you what I say to everyone, watch for him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, this morning, as we noted earlier, we begin the season of Advent. We have arrived, we, be, we arrive at the beginning of the church calendar. Everything restarts and starts fresh now. Our new lectionaries in the back restart with today. Today's also, we arrive at the end of the yearly calendar. We have one month to go and we enter into the year 2024. I was talking with somebody this morning and they said, we remember when we couldn't believe that the 80s would ever exist. And you made it through that. It's the end of our yearly calendar, but it begins the beginning for the church. Why is this? Why does the church do, do that and has done that for so many years? It's because this is the season that leads up to the uh, centerpiece of our faith, the incarnation. God becoming flesh and dwelling among us in the person of Jesus Christ. Advent comes from the Latin word adventus, which means the coming or the arrival. Someone is coming. Something is coming. We are waiting the arrival Therefore, rightly so, this is a season of anticipation and preparation. And this focus is threefold. We are focusing on the arrival of Jesus Christ at Christmas, culminating in Christmas Eve. All of our Christmas Eve services focus on that. And we arrive at that remembrance as we light the candles and sing together Silent Night. Our hearts are receiving Christ, potentially this December, in a new way for you. And we focus on what's called the parousia, the second coming of Christ and his ultimate victory, which we touched on last week, reminding ourselves of why he came in the first place. We find ourselves doing this in a time of commercial chaos, of ever-expanding Christmas lists, if you have kids, ever-expanding Christmas lists, of Christmas trains, of Christmas trees, of Christmas lights, of having to go back up on the ladder because you realize half your lights aren't turning on. Uh, or as I was t- Daryl Hodges and I talking about, or if you are one that goes to the mall on Christmas Eve. I did that once. I was the, I was, uh, it was all men in that store. And what I remember about that, the guy next to me, his comment was, I don't know, just pick one. So in, in this time of, of chaos and commercial, commercialism, The church, you and I, we focus on Christ coming into the world. We focus on Christ entering our hearts and Christ returning again victorious. Hallelujah. And so for this, we are waiting, my friends. As St. Paul says in Corinthians, eagerly awaiting, and we are waiting in hope. But our hope, as I reminded our kids, our hope is not in vain. Our hope is grounded in faith, which is rooted in Jesus Christ, God become flesh. Hebrews 11 verse 1 puts it this way. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Our faith is substance. It is real. It is also crucial and it is necessary. St. Augustine gives us an insight as to why, when he wrote a long time ago, God does not expect us to submit our faith to him without reason, but the very limits of our reason make faith a necessity. 
These are pretty impressive things, our brains. Judah came home and was telling us how brains are some of the most complex things in the universe. There's a lot happening in here. <laughs> but our intellect, our reason, our logic can only take us so far. There are incredibly brilliant, intelligent, smart people out there. But that can only take us so far. At some point, we need to rely on faith. There's a story of an individual named John Patton. He was a Scottish missionary, a fellow Scot, uh, to, to the South Pacific. Now, he's in the South Pacific, and he was struggling to find the right word for faith in their language. He couldn't find it. Faith is hard to explain. I go out and explain to somebody on the street who has never heard of what faith is, try to explain what faith is. It gets complicated. It gets challenging. He was having this challenge. As the story goes, one day he's in his office with one of his indigenous friends, and he's on one of those office chairs where you can lean back. And he's leaning back, and he's kicking his feet up. And he looks over at his indigenous friend, and he says, what am I doing right now? Can you tell me what I'm doing right now? And the word that his indigenous friend used was the word in that language that means to lean your whole weight on. And he snapped up out of his chair, and he said, that's it. That's the word we're using for faith. Faith is leaning our whole weight upon Jesus. Because we cannot lean fully on ourselves. Maybe perhaps in your life you have tried. It doesn't go well, it doesn't end well. Leaning fully on yourself. For our faith is our salvation. Ephesians chapter 2, Paul writes, It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It's a gift from God. Faith is a gift. Faith is a gift from the Lord that is our salvation. It's not from ourselves. That our faith, our faith is not new. Our faith is not some recent invention humans crafted. No, no, Jude chapter 3 reminds us that our faith is the faith passed down to us from Christ and his apostles. That it is faith once delivered for all. 1 John says, let it abide in you that which you have received. That which you have received, the faith that Christ himself passed down for us, let it abide in you. Which means let it dwell in you. Let it live within you. Friends, this global, sacramental, ancient, creedal faith which we are grounded in gives us a real hope. It gives us something that lasts. So what is hope? How would you define hope? If you were to explain that to somebody, what would you say? I uh, opened the dictionary this week, well, went online and clicked the dictionary this week, and it, this is how the dictionary defined it. The dictionary says that hope is an expectation and desire for something better. It's an optimistic feeling that something good will happen. Well, that's nice. It's an optimistic, happy, flowery feeling that something good is going to happen. But just as faith has to be more than what is in between our ears, more than what is in our intellect, there has to be more to hope than a happy, op optimistic feeling that something good will happen. There has to be more to it than that. And there is. Our confessions put it this way, that hope expects promised things. And hope and faith cannot be separated in reality. Faith is the assurance and expectation of things hoped for. There is more to hope. Our hope is not based on chance, a coin flip. That hope expects something that has been promised. It is united, it is connected, it works together with faith. Our hope is real because it is grounded in something real. It is grounded in something promised. It is grounded in something that is eternal and has no end. The season of Advent reminds us of this. It reminds us that he is coming back. And as our gospel says, in great power and glory. That our Lord Jesus is and ever will be victorious. And so we await in great hope of that promised day. 
But my friends, we can also have a living hope. A living hope being this, hope of what he is doing right here and right now. Forgiveness. We were reminded of the truth of forgiveness just a little while ago. His grace and his mercies, new every morning for you. Deliverance and freedom from oppression, from addiction. And being empowered daily by the Holy Spirit to do what he has asked you to do. There is healing, as we often talk about here, there is healing in the name of Jesus. Physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual healing in his name. Our faith delivered to us from the beginning is eternal. It is our salvation. It assures us of what it is that we hope for. And so, my friends, remember, remember this Advent that our faith is not an invention of our own minds. Not crafted by human intellect, drafted together recently. No, our faith has been handed to us from our Lord himself. Passed down through 2,000 years of the church. Carrying with it the power of everlasting life and transformation in your life and mine right here and right now. Remember this Advent that our hope is real. Our hope is grounded and it looks to promised days. And so, in this Christmas season, may you and I ever proclaim, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite us to respond as we gather together and worship in song. You may may stand.
Well, my friends, let us now confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, a creed handed down to us faithfully from our ancestors, a creed not thought up yesterday, not imagined, but delivered, received in faith. As Pastor Grant referred to in Jude, it says the faith delivered once for all. And indeed, this is the faith we confess together by saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now enter into our time of prayer, but before our tithes and offerings, we give thanks to God for the provision that he continues to have for this church. We have, of course, a couple ways to give our offering box at the back of the sanctuary or also various online giving options. We do indeed give thanks for the faithfulness of all who contribute. Also, we are entering into a rather longer time of standing, so if you are not able to continue standing the whole time, please do feel free to be seated. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks that in this season of Advent, you have given us hope. A hope that is not cheap, a hope that is not fraudulent, a hope that is not based on luck, a hope that will not be shattered, but a hope that has already been partially fulfilled by your birth, your death, and your resurrection. Lord Jesus, help us to have hope in this season. Hope that you will return again and rescue your people. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we pray in this season for those that are unwell. We think of those who have ailments of the body or of the mind or of the soul. You are the great physician, and you have knit us together in our mother's wombs. Lord God, just as you have done so, may you repair us. May you heal us. May you make us new. Lord, in your mercy. Father, in this time, we also pray for those that are struggling with food insecurity, with housing insecurity, with job insecurity. We pray for those that are homeless in this time. We pray for those that are wondering how to pay all the bills. Lord God, you provide for all your creation, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the beasts of the field. So too, provide for your children whom you have made in your own image. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we also pray for continued unity. We ask that you unite us together in the love that is found in Jesus Christ. May there be no hint of division among us, especially as we enter into this great and holy season of waiting. Lord, be with us all this time that we might share the hope, the joy, the love, the peace that comes through the gospel of Jesus Christ. May it be infectious to those around us that they too may come and celebrate your birth. Lord, in your mercy... And finally, Lord, we ask that you bless all churches across the earth, wherever people gather in your name, that they may be empowered by your Holy Spirit, that they might be delivered from anyone who wishes to do them harm, and that the gospel would abound in our time. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All repentant Christians who believe that the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ come to us in, with, and under these gifts of bread and wine are indeed welcome at the Lord's table. We offer gluten-free wafers as well as grape juice for those who require or desire them. Please note that anyone is welcome to come forward for a blessing. Just cross your arms over your chest to indicate you will not be communing. Alternatively, according to your conscience, feel free to abstain and remain seated during the sacrament. And now, as we enter into the celebration of the Lord's body and blood, we give thanks that God has indeed given us this gift, and we give thanks for the opportunity to celebrate it. My friends, this is nothing less than a continuation of the incarnation, which we get to partake in faithfully week after week. 
May it enrich our souls and may we receive it in faith. The Lord be with you. Let, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good to give you unending praise. In your Son you suffered with us and for us, offering us the healing riches of salvation and calling us to freedom and holiness. Amen. On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed and handed over into suffering, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to his Father in heaven, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to his Father in heaven, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We ask you, Lord, send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Let us join now and together pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and I invite for those assisting with communion this morning. this heart bound up by shame 
please rise for our communion benediction. Now, Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received this sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us. That we may be filled with the power of his endless love now and forever. Amen. Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God, our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. Indeed, all glory, majesty, power, and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We conclude our worship this morning by singing Ready the Way. The final song is Ready the Way. I think that's from the communion hymns. Yeah, advance the slides. Keep going to the end. Keep going. More. <laughs> more, 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 more. <laughs> Uh, that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little less. Maybe a little less. It's, yeah. So it should be ready the way, and it's on there. It's more fun this way. It is. This is exciting. Yeah. This is this is ex light speed. Those are the communion ones. Keep going. Yep, that one. Yep, yeah, yeah, oh, there we oh, go. Oh. Uh, and one more. Yay. Okay.
My friends, go in hope. Serve the Lord.